ones. So, tinea solium T. serenata, teniasis. So, set stores have a worldwide distribution with instances high in developing countries. Infection rate is as low as 1 per 1000 in the North, Amer North America and as high as 10% in the third world. Port tape one shows a higher incidence, but this is dependent on dietary habitats. With regards to morphology, T. serenata can be up to 4 to 6 metres long and 12, to 12 millimetres broad. It has a pear shaped head, scolettes with four circles with no hooks or nets. Has a long flat body of several hundred sediments, prodlitids, each sediment is about 18 times 6 millimetres of a branch due to this. The age is 35 times 45 micrometres, roundish and yellow brown. It has the peripheral radial striations and contains an embryo with three hooklets. For T. stolium, this is slightly smaller than T. serenata. It has a globular scolette with four circles and a circular low of hooks that gives it solar appearance. It has a neck and has a long flat body. The prodrome tits are 5 times 10 millimetres or 7 times 20 to 12 branch uterus. The ends of T. solium and T. serenata are indistinguishable. In for the life cycle, so a tape one larval cyst, cystericus is ingested with poorly cooked infected meat. The larva escapes the cyst and passes to the small intestine where it attaches to the mucosa by the scolette suckers. The prodrome tits develop as a raw matures in 3 to 4 months. The adult may live in the small intestine as long as 25 years and pass gravid prodrome tits or the feces. Eds excluded from a product that contaminate and persist on vegetation for several days are consumed by cattle or pigs in which they hatch and form cystericide. Light infections remain asymptomatic, but heavy infections may produce abdominal discomfort, epigastric pain, and vomiting and diarrhea. So, for cystericosis, so T. So so solium eds can infect humans and cause cyst cystericosis. So, this is larval cysts in the lung, liver, eye, and brain, resulting in blindness and neurological disorders. Densities can be as high as 1 per 1000 and can account for up to 20% of new biological cases in some countries such as Mexico. We have gastrointestinal symptoms which occur due to the presence of the type 1. Uh, when you have cystic symptoms, these are a result of inflammatory immune responses. Antibodies are produced and are useful epidemiologic tools. Diagnosis is based on the recovery of AIDS or prodrotids and stool from a perineal area. This is so this is confirmed by the presence of antibodies. So for treatment and control, you get Prazanquitol, which is drug of choice. Expulsion of scolettes must be assured to assume a satisfactory treatment. A thorough inspection of beef and pork, adequate cooking or freezing of meat are effective precautions, since the cysticide do not survive temperatures below minus 10 and above 50. Hymelenopis nana, which is dwarf tape room. This is a small tape one, 20 times 0.7 millimetres that affects children. The reservoir of the rodents, infection is by the oral fecal mode and therefore cross infection or infection by AIDS occurs and feces are normal. The worm develops from ingested AIDS into an adult in the small intestine and resides there for several weeks. Light infections produce vague abdominal disturbances where heavy infections may cause enteritis. Diagnosis is based on finding an AIDS in the feces. Praziquanto is a drug of choice and hygiene is best control. So moving on to echinococcus granulosis. This is an organism is commonly in Asia, Australia and Eastern Africa and Southern Spain, Southern parts of South America and Northern parts of North America. The incidence of human infection is about 1 to 2 per 1,000 and may be higher in rural areas affected regions. So the morphology, this is the smallest of all the tape ones, 3 to 9 millimetres long with only 3 prodrotids. So looking at the life cycle, the adult worm lives in domestic and wild carnivorous animals. So eggs passed by the infected animals are ingested by the grazing farm animals or man which localise in different organs and develop into hydratus cysts containing many larvae. When other animals consume infected organs of these animals, pro proto so cholesterol escape the cyst into the small intestine and develop into adult worms. Echinococcus aids when swallowed by man produce embryos that penetrate the small intestine and enter the circulation and form cysts in the liver, lung, bones and sometimes brain. The cyst is round and measures 1-7 to cm diameter, although it can grow up to 30 cm. The cyst consists of an outer a nuclear hyacinth trichorula and an inner nucleated geminal layer containing clear yellow fluid. Dotto cysts attach to geminal layer, although some cysts known as brood cysts may only have larvae hydrated sand, and man is a dead-end host. So look at the symptoms. The symptoms are comparable to those of a slowly growing tumour, which depends on the location of the cyst. Large abdominal cysts produce increasing discomfort. Liver cysts cause obstructive jaundice. Peribronchial cysts may produce pulmonary abscesses. Brain cysts produce intracranial pressure and Jacksonian epilepsy. Kidney cysts can cause renal infections, and the contents of a cyst can produce anaphylactic responses. So looking at diagnosis, clinical symptoms of a slow growing tumour accompanied by eosinophilia are suggestive. Interdermal Cassoni tests with hydrated fluid is useful. 
How many cysts and calcified cysts can be visualised using the X-rays? Antibodies against hydrated fluid antigens have been detected in a sizable population of infected individuals by ELISA or direct hemoglobin test. Treatment involves surgical removal of cysts or an activation of hydrated sand by injecting a cyst of 10% formalin and its removal for 4 to 5 minutes. Tazaquantil has been shown to be effective in many cases. Another alternative is albendazole in high doses and preventative measures involve avoiding contact with infected dogs and cats and elimination of the infection. And finally, looking at Echinococcus multicorealis, this is a type 1 similar to E. granulosis that also causes hydrated in northern parts of Asia and North America. It has a very similar morphology and life cycle except that rodents are intermediate host. Humans, when infected with this worm, also develop hydrated cysts which produce symptoms similar to those called by E. granulosis. Over the cysts are multiocular in many chambers, the organism is resistant to plasquanto. High doses of albendazole has some antiparasitic effect. Surgery is a means of removing a cyst. Rodent control is a means of prevention. You can see here, this is a summary table, right? So we talked about tinea, sardinata, solium, the cysticulosis, granulosis, multiculosis. So you can see here in the table that presanquitol is used in most cases, apart from multiculosis, which uses albendazole as a preferred treatment. Um, the symptoms as well, quite similar, abdominal pain, epigastric pain, vomiting, diarrhea, etc. Some extra ones such as loss of weight, anorexia, and large cyst production. And you can see the transmission as well, which is quite interesting here. Cyst in beef and pork and fish. And then you can see the diagnosis as well, which is the prodlotids or AIDS. Then you've got ro 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 integral artery, anti antibody. Then you've got anti hydration fluid antibody and Cassoni test. So that's what was quite really interesting video on cystoscape ones for you. So I hope you look forward to the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.